Hi there, my name is Gaurav and welcome to Avid Secret Studio. Today I've got a good friend and an awesome mixer, engineer, tracking, producer as well actually, he's done some co-production stuff as well, right? A little bit. This guy bit. is a beast, man. I was, in the, <laughs> I, I was thankfully in the studio the other day um, and you showed us around and honestly I was, I was blown away, man. You're so humble, uh, you're amazing and obviously these guys worked with the greats like, um, like Nas and and Nipsey Hussle, RIP right there, and, and and there's so many other people that you worked with, bro, and I just wanna give my introduction there, but I want you to also give an introduction to yourself. <laughs> oh, my name's David Kim, I'm from Los Angeles, California, and uh, I'm a mix engineer. Uh, I've worked with Nas, I've worked with Nipsey, um, I engineer for Hip Boy, so basically everything that he touches, I get a chance to mix on. Um, I've done Big Sean. I'm constantly trying to get better, uh, try to be a better engineer, for a better person, better man every day. And, uh, and thanks you, for having me, uh, man. Bro, honestly, it is amazing, man. Like I was telling everyone at Avid as well, like your energy, bro, is just, that's what you need, man. And also, 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 I just want to touch, before we get into showing the gems, right, which I know a lot of you guys out there want to see. <laughs> before we get into that, I just really want you to just touch on what we spoke about the other day of like, you got to this position, you've got the Grammy, mm -hmm. right? You've got multiple billboard or, or plaques or whatever it may be, right? Accolades mm -hmm. and that wasn't easy, man. Mm -hmm. You went through the hard way, like, right, bro? Like you, you, that, yeah. And that's why probably you're humble and you, you're really respectful as a person, bro. Yeah. You'll get people out there who will just go, they will take it to the head. Like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's what you to explain to that new generation out there of how hard it actually was. And how many, man. did you have a nine to, was that a nine to five thing for you? No, it was like. It was, <clears throat> at one point it was a nine to six. I was doing 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. as a runner or as an intern. And then from 6 p.m. to like 2 or 3 a.m., I would get into any studio that's open. And then I would crash on the couch at the studio, wake up at 8, clock in, oh get to God. mopping, picking up trash, do that for another eight hours, wake, uh, and, then, and then get in the studio again. So like I used to go to work on Monday morning and then come home on Saturday night. So, yeah, and then I'll, I'll maybe take one day off or, or go back to the studio, but, but I had to go home to like wash up and what? you know all that stuff. And I'm not saying I didn't shower for a whole week. <laughs> the studio has showers yeah, yeah, and yeah. things like that. So like basically, um, there were a lot of things in my past that I felt um, I didn't give my all to. Mm -hmm. And it took a while for me to realize it was no one's fault except for my own. Right, right. It's like, I didn't try hard enough. I never put maximum effort into anything. So, you know, if this is something I love, I'm gonna put maximum effort into it and then see what happens. Wow. And like, luckily, um, I stuck it out and, and now I'm like, you know, beginning to, it's beginning to bear fruit. But, mm -hmm. you know, those seeds, they take a long, long time to grow. And, and I want like the kids out there to know that there is no overnight success. There is no secret plug-in. There is no secret template. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's it took me ten years to get to yeah. where I where I am, and yeah. um, I didn't get my first credit until like six years into the game. You know, so there you have it. Yeah, it's man. Hard work. Don't give up. That's another thing, right? Just yep. don't give up. There's always always ways to get into music, but it is not an overnight success mm -hmm. thing at all. And all the conversation we've been having, everyone's selling their journeys. One person, someone, you know. Um, again, in a studio, mm -hmm. someone kind of was just literally the T-boy for like years and then um, no one had a success story. And, and instead of like all the guests that I've had and we'll be doing this stuff with, I've made sure that they've kind of said that story. Yeah. Because when you look at it, it's like, oh, the Grammys, the, the, the plaques and stuff. But it's like, you guys have really grafted, man. Man. To learn, uh, like, let alone like Pro Tools and plugins, but to actually learn the stuff mm -hmm. in and out, like I'd be a wizard. <laughs> it's not like overnight stuff. It yeah, really it's... is like, Repetition, like, yeah, man. like diehard stuff. Man. You, you know, it's crazy. You got you guys. Um, TZO was here on yeah. Friday. Mm -hmm. TZO was um, Chris Brown's recording engineer, yeah, yeah. And like, I was assisting for those sessions, oh, and like, God, he would nice. put me on credits and all sorts of stuff. So, me and him go way back. Wow, Fabian, yeah. Um, he's the first one to introduce me to like UAD, oh, right? Wow. And like, he was in the studio mixing, I forget what he was mixing, but. Um, I was an intern at that time and like I just peeked my head in like, hey, and he was mixing by himself Shit. and and we got to kind of talking and there's certain times in my life where I'm like, man, I'm going to quit. And then I, yeah, I 
I, I didn't know who else to call and I hit up Fave and he picked up and he was like, no man, just just stick through it. Wow, so like, man. I didn't have any mentors per se, yeah. like an everyday mentor, yeah. but like there's guys that like I reached out to right. every once in a while. Even Crystal, wow. um, we met at NAMM here two yeah. years ago. Yeah. She was just exhibiting and she came out and said, what's up? And then now like, She's at the engineers yeah. booth. She's doing avid. Yeah. Like it's it's amazing, I'm, man. Just happy to see like, bro. It's just like fresh faces in this, mm -hmm. man. There's a whole generation of music creators and producers mm -hmm. and engineers, and it's like now's the time to really. Engineers are becoming. A, they've always been a pinnacle to music, yeah. but I mean now, really as a brand, they're all like coming out as like their artists. Yeah, like royalties, man. Because it's like people realizing shit without the engineer. Bro, the mix is not there. Mm -hmm. Like the amount, of, how many labels out there probably have said, "Nah, well, well, this isn't sound mix." Yeah, put it on radio, and it's probably it's a make or break moment, right? Yeah, fast. So without the engineers, mm -hmm. or even the tracking engineers, and, and yeah. of course the artist has to be good, but um, without the engineers, man, it's uh, it's it's impossible. But it's a team. It's a team effort, man. Team but, effort, exactly. and it's and it's important for everybody to feel valued. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like engineers, we never really we never want to be the star, but no. we do want our respect. Yes. You know what it's I'm saying? Respect. Just like acknowledge that you know our work is valid and we all collaborate. Yes. You know, and the, it's it's literally like 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 a like a team effort. Fast. If you look at the 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 like you have the artists mm -hmm. behind the artists, it's so much more coming down to us. Mm -hmm. Sort of software. The software didn't work. Yeah. The engineer can't work. The engineer doesn't work. Producers pissed. Producer doesn't work, and the and it just goes. It's yeah, a domino man. effect all the way down Fast. from the manufacturing. So like it is team effort all the way up. Yeah. Man. Um, but anyway, I feel like I've been talking there quite a lot. And I think <laughs> people want to see uh, people want to see you dive in. So what, what we've done today um, is I've just chucked rant. This isn't David's laptop, by the way, so the plugins might be different. But we're gonna put David on the spot here and um, <laughs> see what what if he, if he's not. So there's no waves, by the way. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna find things that are on there that are different. So um, yeah. So all right, cool. We crack, put the headphones on. Yeah, let's do it. it. Yeah. All right, so. Um, listen to it from the top real quick. What are you doing here now, David? So you're just kind of like, you're just basically checking levels and stuff like that. Yeah. Loudness. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm listening to the synth melody mm -hmm. and I'm seeing how much space it has um, in the sound field. Right, okay. So like, what I like to do is create like big wide mixes. Um, so I'm gonna solo the synth melody and see how much space we have on the side. And it seems like we, it's pretty wide, but we can still kind of stretch it out. Um, ozone imager. By default, it has a the whole um, spectrum selected, and then you can like separate it like this nice. if you want to. Uh, I'll do that sometimes if I like want to eight away to like stick out. I'll leave the low end alone, mm -hmm. and then I'll make the the mid band a little wider. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for this case, it's not a bass. So I'm gonna just uh, spread the whole stereo with, and you gotta press that stereoize button. I like the mode two, less phasey. But I'm gonna just exaggerate a little bit. Mm. It brings out like the artifacts in there too. Okay, cool. And the signal's pretty compressed, so I, I, I would normally try to compress it so like it sits uh, well and you can hear all the little elements in the melody. So, but right now it's pretty it's pretty nice and compressed. It so just like. to double check, um, David, so in, in a normal context, right, mm -hmm. um, Greece will send you these beats, you put the stems in here or the project, whatever, you would start with the synth rather than anything else? Or like melodies? Or... Um, I usually start with drums. Oh, you I do? I usually okay. start with drums, but in this case, yeah. I mean, since it's a solo, um solo instrument yes yeah. i'm gonna just tackle that first right. and seeing that like that's the first thing we hear on a song yeah i'm gonna yeah. try a different approach and usually i'll go to you know the, the loudest part okay. loop yeah. eight bars 
Um, make sure we're on loop. And yeah. then go. But it's good that you kind of assess the trap by listening first. That mm -hmm. was the key element that I picked up was that you just listened. It was like, all right, where's the problem? Is yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> what I, do I do first? I try not to fix things that don't exist. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people will add plugins just because they're taught to do it. And then before you know, it's like, wait, why doesn't it sound the way? I, yeah. Because it sounded good already. And then you, you thought you had to do something and to it. And this is why me and David got chatting was because David actually has a YouTube channel, which spoke to me. <laughs> like <laughs> Literally, you told you didn't tell someone what to do. You told them to kind of fix it. And, you know, also like you got to try different things, man. Yeah, fast. There's no, there's no, like, you can't just say add free DB and then add it to every single thing. You can't. Like, it you doesn't can. work like that, man. It really doesn't. <laughs> And, and I know because I've done it. You know right? What I'm saying? That, yeah. Like I've, I remember sitting there and like trying to make beats, and I'm copying exactly what the guy's doing. And, I'm and like, it don't Wait, sound the why same. Why does mine not sound the same? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's why. Like, I'm not a huge fan of uh, templates and things like that because mm. you don't know how much the signal is going through it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, a lot of my um, a lot of my uh, process has to do with gain staging, and if the signal's too hot going into all my buses, then the plugins in those buses are gonna overload. They're not yeah. gonna react the same way. So I'm listening to the 808 and kick and uh, relationship. Is so important, man. I think it's like it's so underrated. And I don't know why because it's for me that's like 101 of mixing, man. Is like just really learning how to make sure you're like you're gain staging basically yeah. every single session. Yeah, I mean it's, that's 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 the number one easiest way to get like loud even mixes mm -hmm. and um, not have like that pumping sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you get from like over limiting and yeah. stuff, you know what I mean? Okay, let's see. Okay, let's let's go with Abbott stuff, yeah. Ooh. Okay, so I like that sound, but I don't like all of it. So I'm gonna throw it on a parallel, and then I'm gonna okay. compress. So um, just just briefly, sorry, I know I keep uh, stopping you there, but yeah. with the parallel, what exactly have you done there? So you've created. So I duplicated this 808 bus, mm -hmm. so it's it's receiving the 808 the same way. It's exactly the same copy, except okay. um, I'm gonna use it as um, a parallel bus, meaning okay. I'm gonna process something, but I don't want the whole process sound. Mm -hmm. and instead of turning okay. this mix down, because I like the full process sound just at a smaller mm -hmm. level. And then I'm gonna blend it in with the main one. Wow, okay. So let me hold on, delete this fade. I'm gonna throw that on there and then I'm gonna just compress um, it like a good amount. Let's see what we got. I'll, hmm. Nice. Let's see what this will do. Turn off the auto gain because it's just gonna make it crazy. But for now, I'm gonna mute the main one. I'll compress it a nice. Like, I'm almost gonna slam this. Ooh. Leave a little bit of attack. Okay. And then I'm gonna just turn that down. So. Guys, see how David is not just going through presets and he's actually diving into every single parameter and actually really listening and uh, finding the faults, basically. Pre fader. Yeah, turn that off. Because I want to see what it's doing after. Mm -hmm. So that versus this. Ooh. So sometimes I'll even add like a, a widener. Oh, on the 808. On the 808. Like since since it's a parallel, I can really do anything to it and just turn it down. It's not really changing the uh, the sound of the main 808, wow. right? So if I have an imager on here like this, Whoa. and if I solo it, it just sounds like that, right? Oh my god, right? And just go crazy with it. Oh, that's mad. Combo it with this. Oh man, this is without it. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's some grit. Yeah. Some real grit. And suddenly you have like almost air from your 808, you know? Kind of filling in a little bit. Exactly, exactly. So now I want to blend these together. They got to sit right. And it, sometimes, like, you know, I'll, 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 uh, I'll send a signal and, and 
what's it called, and duck it. <clears throat> um, but I don't really like that pumping sound too much, the side chain sound. Um, so I don't. Do you guys have Fab Filter? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Fab Filter Pro Q3. Yeah, standard. My most <coughs> used plugin. I'm gonna send signal from bus nine and then bus nine. <coughs> Boom. And Unity gain. Wow. And then I'm gonna just uh, focus on like 40 hertz for now. Turn down this guy. Oh, yeah. And then turn in, turn on the side chain button, right? And now every time the kick hits, only, I'm only ducking 40 hertz. Right. That way you don't get the crazy pumping sound. So that's so the kick can... Yeah, crunch through. And I also noticed that it, the... Um, the timing is a little bit off. <clears throat> but sometimes what I'll do is like, if the timing of the kick and yeah. the 808 sound a little bit off, I'll like try to nudge it a couple. Until like, well, you get that. Stick. Oh. Almost, almost, almost. You see what I'm trying to do though? Oh, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to I'm trying to time it perfectly with the kick so that you don't get that little late sound. Um Ooh. It's a little bit off still. Ooh. Yeah, almost there. And if you get it perfectly <clears throat> timed, it like the kick really jumps out. Cuz instead of fighting with the phasing it's like complimentary. Right. That's a little bit tougher. Go to slip. Almost there. Yeah, this is like the painstaking, but like this makes the, makes all the difference in the world. Let's see, if we got. There you go. Mm. I think we're good now. Okay. Stretch it out. And like once once my 808 and kick are on, it's like the rest of it's pretty much. You're focusing on it, 808 and kick yeah. to make it perfect. And then everything else will start complimenting, right? Yep, yep. And now I'm going to blend in the synth melody now. Wow. Turn the kick down a little. Okay, cool. And then uh, one thing that I've been using a lot is Relay. And um, I use it because most people print their stems in stereo. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, on Pro Tools, it's kind of tough to place things with the two uh, pan knobs. So I use Relay wow. okay. to have one pan knob. And if right. I need to spread something, I can do that. And then oh, I have wow. all of that in one control. That's so, gem. so you're playing with space a little bit now, right? So you've exactly, got the kick and exactly. your, your 808 in the middle. Yep, kick, 808, start. middle. <clears throat> and then um, usually my perks, um, I'm going to toss them like alternating sides. How do you, so how do you find where you're going to place it? Like, it, do you have, do, do you say like, oh, a snare always here or a hi-hat's always going to be here? No, nah, there's, the ne depends. there's never a rule. I just like try it. So you, you play with it, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna start with the the main percussive instrument, which is this hi hat one. And I'm just gonna send it a little bit to the left and see how it sounds. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aha! See now I realize ah. that it's this nice. one. <laughs> like just a smidge, right? And I got the second hi hat coming in here. Since I have the uh, one of them going to the left, I'm gonna send this one to the right. Oh. See, now we have like depth. Oops. Maybe like 3D. Okay, this open hat. Where is that hat? I don't see it. Oh, I guess yeah. there's nothing on this one. 
right? Yeah, I think it's, yeah. All right, cool. I'm, I'm gonna get rid of that. <laughs> and this one's already going left. Ooh, That's cool. Yeah. Um, one thing I might do to it is like spread it out. Wow. Just so it fills more so space. You use that, the stereo width on there rather than using it on kind of like a separate plugin. That's yeah, smart, yeah. man. So now we they have all this and control. And, yeah. and look, and, and it's barely using any DSP. There's zero delay or oh well, zero delay on relay. Dude, that's insane. Yeah, there's a lot of plugins that I, I used to use a lot. Right, right, right. And then um, just noticing how much delay it adds, I'm like, okay, I had to cut off. Like Soothe, I love Soothe, oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, Soothe yeah. is super DSP. It is um, very heavy, man. Heavy, so. Even like auto-tune is quite heavy. Yeah, um, unless you go to like the low latency. Exactly, mode. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I've, I've like kind of nav navigated around um, plugins issues. that have a oh, lot okay, of nice, delay. Nice. You can always commit stuff as well once you're happy, yeah, right? Facts, facts. Yeah. Or freeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or buy a Pro Tools carbon and offload the DS. No, like <laughs> <laughs> okay, on the clap, I'm gonna just uh, Man, compress it a little bit. It's really just piercing through. Right? Like, I mean, so the kicks are always piercing through that 808, it sounds perfect. Medium attack. Which rapper can you hear in this? Huh? Which rapper can you hear in this? What's that? Which rapper can you hear in this, bro? Mm. Cause I got someone in my mind. Uh, future? Oh my god, I yeah. swear to god. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, man. That's that. How the hell did you... Can because you that's like the dirty sprite yeah, yeah, yeah. type of type of melody. Uh, I would love to impersonate him, but yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can though, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah too, I can man. hear it. Definitely. <laughs> All right, let's, let's like, now Now it's like kind of, it's time to add sauce. Oh. Uh, we can do whatever we want now. Um, now it's where you get creative, right? Mm -hmm. You've done the bit where you're like, okay, I've gelled it together. Now you want to get a little bit more creative. Mm -hmm. Let's see what, like, let's see if we're going to go crazy, you know? Uh, when, uh, in a normal instance, if you get like, you know the synths and the melody stuff, you get that all separated out. Mm -hmm. Do you gel it together and then print or anything and then play mm. with that printed track? Or do you no, still do I that? I just do, I work on them separate. Okay, right. Yeah. So the more, the more, I mean, the more separated it is, the better for better me. Because right? then yeah, I get real control. Yeah. The, the hardest, uh, most challenging is when I get like one sample that has like, that has 10 different instruments in uh, it and they're already okay. it's like a, it's a, except from oldie or something right. where they used to mix it differently where the yeah, trumpets yeah, are yeah. super high yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah and then you're just like damn you have no control so you yeah. got to work with compression you got to uh -huh. uh, you got to eq and yeah. things like that um okay so this face mistress that's like i just threw it in there for um for no real reason but um this this might be more of an arranging thing but I like to arrange <laughs> and see what the that's artist good, thinks sometimes, because like that's like like my creative side, you know. And that, so that's like, come from your like, production kind of background as well. Exactly, got, right? exactly. Yeah. So like I'll pick I'll pick a spot, um, maybe eight bars after the kick is introduced, mm -hmm. and then I'll have like a filtered part on there. Oh, that's sick. And then I might do this, take out the hi-hat. That's sick. Yes. And another thing, I mean, this might be more on the production side, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna uh, throw a crazy delay on this hi-hat. Um, so how I'm gonna do this is, actually, I'm gonna do this. Boom, duplicate it. And then go, uh, no, wait, just do it. Echo Boy? Yes. Nice. And I'm gonna uh, send this guy to the other side, maybe like far left, right? Wow. So crazy, fast, weird delay. Oh. Oh, man. 
Something crazy like that, you know? Oh, that's so sick. Wow. And this style of music, it's like, it's known for triplets. So I'm, I'm gonna oh, throw it on triplet, course. right? And so this is now, I'm, we're creating a moment here. We got the climax of the song when the kicks, kick drops in. Oh, vibing, so good, right? You got the person, you got the people hype. Yeah, that's it. And then now like, okay, let's create a moment here. Dynamics, boom. Uh, Ear candy on the yeah. left side. Building the momentum. And then you got the... And then we yeah. back to the... You just we're back to like the momentum. That. Yeah, we're going roller coaster on them. That's smart, man. Just look. And you um, would just do that for like kind of just little things throughout the track, right? Just create mm -hmm. variations, um, yeah. and then and then see kind of what you're working with, mm -hmm. and then get the artist to kind of be like, or the producer be like, all right, cool, that works. Yeah, right? and and it all depends on your relationship with the with the artist. So yes. you can't just go in there and create drops and right. do all sorts of stuff if it's your first time working mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. But like if you have their their trust and 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 they like what you do already, yeah. There's no harm in it, you know what I'm saying? Because like, okay, this is mix one, I'll send it to them. Mm -hmm. There's obviously going to be revisions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hear revisions, they're going to hear revisions. And if they don't like what I did with the arrangement, they'll say, you know, oh, can we change it back to the OG? Right, right. And as engineers, we can't take that personally. Yeah, you know of what I'm course, saying? of course. I feel like we, um, I mean, we're all guilty of this. We all make that mistake of like thinking it's our song yeah it's not our no, song no. and yeah. so we go crazy on it yeah. and mix it how we we envisioned it without considering how they saw the song right to be. yeah so and true. that's the whole yeah. purpose is yeah. like to help the producer and the artist achieve their vision mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. why they hire a mix engineer that's yeah. capable yeah. it's not so it's like hey here do whatever you Change want with it. it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, you're so, right, man. That's a very be, strong, valid point. It's like having roles in the business, I guess, right? Facts. Um, and and it's like it's inevitable. You, you you're gonna get your feelings hurt. Um, there's times where like I do a whole mix, I send it in, and like it sounds amazing. And then the label's like, uh, we need it to sound like the reference. Oh. And then, so it's like the reference sounds terrible. Oh. But they listen. They've listened to it so many times. Oh man! So like you yeah, got you got to sacrifice your soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Send it back to the OG and be like, here you go. And sometimes like. Spitefully, I'll be like, Ugh, and go extra, uh, and then send it back, and they're like, it's perfect. Like, oh, no, how did you, yeah, no, oh <laughs> you know what I mean? Those things hurt, but then you you take L's, and then yeah, yeah, exactly. and then there's gonna be moments where where you're allowed to express yourself creatively, yeah. uh, creatively, and um and sometimes you're gonna have to sacrifice like what you want to do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for the sake of the song. All right, yeah. Um, so let me see where we at. So now I'm I'm just gonna um. Add a little volume, maximize oh, it. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, this modern setting is pretty good on like trap stuff. Ooh. Ooh. And you I hear that know? ringing out, like the 808 ring. Oh, that sounds fat. Like too loud though, but let's hear it. Man, that sounds so like well shaped. And then, and then you got the you got the sample like taking up all this space. Yeah. You know, the the only thing is that like, you got to be careful about spreading your uh, music too wide because okay. there's still stuff in mono. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like okay, there's yeah, times yeah, where yeah, I yeah. listen to it on your phone or something, and then the music disappears, and I'm like, oh, oh go back shit. to the drawing okay, board. Right, right, and right. in that case, like I might duplicate my music bus mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and put it to like pan 30 30. Right. So right, okay. so now there's something in the center. Oh, you know right, what I'm okay. saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, yeah, man. man. I mean, that's that's basically that was, what I would do to. <laughs> you gave away a lot this. of gems there, man. That was, um, and the best thing is you really went into it and you assessed it. As I said before, you listened to yeah. it, you assessed the track a little bit. Okay, where does this need to go? 
Um, and then in normal instance, you'd like great, obviously, arrangement, ear candy and stuff like that. But that was uh, absolutely uh, amazing, man. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks David. for having it's me. Always man. a pleasure, man. This is, uh, and obviously, I want to say congratulations in front of the camera, bro, on the Grammy, <laughs> on the Grammy of course. Thank I've you. I've seen your journey, you. man, and and you know when you when you kind of well, was that two two three years ago now. It's mm -hmm. been since I've been following you and stuff, and dude, you've you've done so well. Man, um, keep going too. This is just the beginning. Oh, this man. is just the beginning. I agree, it's bro. Just the beginning. I agree. Thank you so much, David, <laughs> and uh, thank you guys out there, and we'll see you soon. Thank y'all. Peace.